Lindsay here, the Frugal Crafter. Today we're gonna work in pastels for those folks who don't like to get their hands dirty and who don't like the scritchy scratchy noise that a regular pastel makes. We're gonna use pan pastels, which are kind of like big, um, a big palette of eyeshadow, basically. Very similar in feel and performance. And we're also going to use pastel pencils. I'm just gonna lift up the whole tray because I'm gonna um, knock all over the place if I try to get one out while I'm not looking at it. Um, so this way you can get pastel, you can create with pastel, and keep your hands clean and not have that scratchy noise as much as you would with regular stick pastels. And I want to let you know that if you are a fan of my tutorials and you like pastels and you like mixed media, that my class at Craftsy has just launched today, which means it's open for enrollment now. I'll put a link in the video description so you can check it out. And um, it is a it has six lessons. It is jam-packed full of technique and content and they, oh my gosh, they are so talented out in Denver where they produce these classes. Um, they really made everything look fantastic and cut out all the boring bits that you guys have to kind of sit through when you're watching my YouTube videos because you don't have to when you're watching the Craftsy class because it's all pure awesome content. So I do hope you check it out um, and let me know what you think. But let's go on to our tutorial. We're going to make a jellyfish and we're going to begin by doing the background. And actually the first thing I'm going to do is kind of make myself an area within to work and I you know what I think I'm just gonna trace my uh, my tin of pencils here these are the Derwent um, pastel pencils now pastel pencils are a little bit chalkier and drier feeling than your regular pastel sticks so I just want to let you know that these are gonna have that scratchy noise when I'm sketching with them but the you know pen pastels are very creamy and soft and uh, creamy is the wrong word they're velvety I guess um, and that will, so you won't hear those uh, that weird noise afterwards. Now something I want to show you are um, these sponges. They're by Pan Pastel. You can use makeup sponges, but the nice thing about these is that they're actually, um, all the media will stay on the top of it. It's not as soft. It's much firmer, easier to control. So they're really neat to have um, if you're going to invest in the Pan Pastel. I would highly recommend investing in these as well. I'm going to start off with some blue here, and this is from the Painter set of Pan Pastels. I recommend if you're trying to figure out like what to invest in first, I would get the painter set first because that is um, all of your pure color and then um, you can get uh, tints which is that pure color with white added or you can get um, shades which is the pure color with black added or you can get extra dark extra dark shades which would have that color but more black added um, but the thing I really like is that you can you're putting down such a thin coat of media here that it's really not going to waste anything you're going to be able to um, you know go over it layer over it you're not going to have the dust like you have with regular pastels so none of that awesome goodness is going in the trash and um, you know all the pastel sets I all these pan pastels I purchased myself um, the, actually my husband did buy me a little set of the pearlescent ones which are pretty but um, how I collected these um, was I started with a painting set and I'm going in with a, just a little bit lighter of a shade here I started with a painting set and then I got the um, shades and then I got the tints and then I got the extra dark sh shades because that's kind of how I feel they are valuable in that order and then I just waited until I saw a really good deal and had a good coupon at Jerry's and I picked them up but you know just keep your eyes open and if you see a good deal on them you know maybe keep a list of the colors you want when I actually first started I bought magenta um, lime green and turquoise and I played with those colors and then I fell in love then I went and bought some bought some sets they also have some mixed media sets that may be a little bit more um, appealing to you in those colors you know because they are a little bit smaller and less expensive uh, but if you don't want any duplicates just go with the um, the painting set and the shades and the tints. Now I'm just kind of working all this together so I get a fairly smooth background. I want a little bit of that, uh, a little bit more dark in here. And this is just going to kind of work it into the paper. And I don't really think you need to fix it at this point. Some people like to fix it before they go on, um, but I really don't think that's necessary. And if you want this to have a more opaque um, background, you could go in with one of these super light tint colors or, or white. And you can work over that and you can see how you get a much um, more opaque blend here and it just gives you like a more of a um, an all over total coverage. It just smooths everything out, fills in the tooth and is really nice. And my hands are still clean. Hard to believe. 
All right, I'm really happy with that. I got a nice uh, ombre blend there, and I think that looks pretty cool. So the next thing I'm going to do is sketch on some jellyfish, and I am going to use my pastel pencils for this. And I typically don't really like pastel pencils that much, but they are really handy for this. I'm going to sketch a little bit smaller than I think I want. So for this jellyfish, I'm just doing like a semicircle. And then I'm going to do another one over here. It's a little bit bigger. And I will link up the reference photo that I'm using. It is by Dana Critchlow at Paint My Photo. I hope I pronounced her name right. But uh, she's got some really, uh, uh, really nice photos over there, including this one. So and I'm just kind of getting an idea of where I want the... Uh, the trails to go but that's pretty much all I need to put in for that and I can always make things bigger with the pan pastels as I go now since I am going to be doing some detail with these pan pastels I'm gonna to switch to a different uh, product to blend and these are the little um, they're like plastic palette knives that have these little like socks that go over them and it's the same material as those sponges um, and it allows you to get a lot of really nice detail in here. Uh, the jellyfish in my reference photo are orange but I really wanted to do some different colors so I think I'm going to do some pinks and I've got this really light pink here and I'm going to put that in the kind of the highlight areas right in there and I can go back in and like which I probably shouldn't have sketched it in an orange if I knew I was going to do a different color, but I guess I was um, just overwhelmed, overtaken by the gorgeousness of the reference photo. <laughs> that happens to me sometimes. And then I think I'm going to go in with some of the um, the magenta from my painting palette there. Drag some of that over. And don't worry if you um, if you get a little bit of contamination on your pans of color. You can always just go in and wipe it either with a paper towel later or, you know, just pick it up the next time you paint. It's not really that big of a deal. I don't find them to get contaminated that easily. The thing I just would warn is just don't buy them to hoard them. If you're going to get these, they are an investment. They're not cheap. I, I know because I hemmed and hawed a long time before buying these. Um, use them. You know, don't be afraid to, to break, break them in and, and use them. You're not going to use them up. One thing I did before I invested in the pan pastels was I actually bought a really um, big kit of eyeshadow. It was like the ELF brand um, at, I think I picked it up at Target for like 14 bucks and it had like a ton of colors. And I got that because I knew it would probably act a very similar way so I could try it out before investing. It actually is more expensive per ounce than the pan pastels, but at least I got to try it, spending 15 bucks to make sure I was really going to like that effect. Um, and you can do that too. You can buy some eye, a palette of eyeshadow and play with it and see if you even like this technique before, you know, dropping some change on the pan pastels. It's a great way to kind of try before you buy and then you'll know if you love it or not, you know. The colors will be a little bit nicer in pan pastel, a little more opaque, but, you know, it'll give you the idea. So I'm just dipping into some purple here and giving that some shadow on the bottom. Try not to over blend. It, blending is so fun with these, but just try to keep some of your... Um, of your color pure. I'm go over here and do the same thing over there in our shadows. I like these rounded ones. They're probably my most used of the uh, the pastel tools. And I actually bought this bought some sponges and tools before I invested in the pan pastels just to see if I could just rub them on my stick pastels and uh, to see if that would work. And my stick pastels were a little too hard for this. I did find though that if I wet the sponges and then rubbed them on my stick pastels, I could get a very similar look. So if you're trying to use what you have and get a similar look, you can try that. Um, it works really good if you're going over stencils like for mixed media and your art journal or whatnot. But the softness of these um, are really nice for this. But you can use regular pastels and smudge with your fingers and everything. Don't feel like you have to run out and buy these to do this tutorial because it's not necessary. You can use your sticks. I'm just giving you this as another option if you are, um, if you're just loving the pastel look but you don't want to get your hands dirty and you don't want to hear the scritch scratch of the, um, of the pastels because I know that is a big concern for you guys. Now I also like to try other things. I picked up this brush stick. I want to try this to see how this works and I'm going to try this with a little kind of buttery yellow. Let's see how that works. It might be too stiff. Um, oh, it works all right. I feel like it's maybe pulling um, the pastel off of my paper than actually depositing it. So I'm going to give this a pass. I'll just wash it off and use it for something else. Um, and I also have some makeup applicators, so I want to try those. I picked these up at for 99 cents at the Christmas tree shop, so let's see how these work because I always like to see, you know, if other stuff will work as well. Let's try that. I think this is going to work all right because, because you know how the pan pastels are very much like eyeshadow. Eyeshadow applicator works really good for that. 
I don't know if it works as well as, well, we'll try it. This is with eyeshadow applicator here. Now I'm going to try, see if I have a clean one. This one's pretty clean. Yeah, that's a clean one. Um, let's try that same color with that over here on this one. Yeah, I mean, I may not have as much control with the makeup applicator, but I felt like they still, you know, deposited rather than kicked up the, uh, the stuff. So yeah, you could definitely substitute that. And the nice thing about these is actually I got them because the handles are different colors, so I figured I could keep my colors organized and know what I used each color for, and maybe just store them in the palettes with my Pam Pastel. Or I don't know, I'm always, I don't know, I'm always looking for like things I can repurpose and for art when I'm out shopping. So there, I'll, I'll let you guys benefit or not benefit from my <laughs> from my crazy experiments. Now I think I want to put um, maybe some light pink in that as well because I don't want to get too. Uh, I want to kind of stay in this color theme. And I need a little bit bolder color, so I'm going to go back over to that magenta. So notice I'm still not using a ton of colors. That's something I really preach when I'm creating, to kind of keep going back to the colors you've already used so you have harmony in your work and you don't just, um, you don't just use colors to, to use them. You're not creating discord. You want to create harmony. And I just want this like kind of ethereal um, trails on the, on my little uh, guys here. I don't want it too blendy, but I do want some of that wispy, wiggly lines there. If anyone has pan pastels, let me know in the comments below. Let me know how you like them. Let me know if you'd like to see more, uh, more tutorials with them. Cause I was kind of hesitant to do pan pastels because I didn't know how many of you guys would have them and I didn't want, I wanted it to be useful for you guys. So let me know. I'm gonna also do a little bit of white right in there. Um, if you need to clean your tool, what you wanna do is just wipe it um, on a paper towel or I'll just use the margin of this picture and then you'll be able to pick up nice, fresh, clean color with your um, with your little applicator. And I might go back in with like a Schmincke, um uh, stick pastel to brighten that up if I want to later or any other brand of white chalky soft pastel that I have maybe a little bit of that purple because I've already used some of that. I like to reinforce my colors whenever possible. Okay, so I'm gonna wipe off the extra there. And I think I wanna put a little bit of a highlight with the white on the top of my jellyfish here. I think I'll probably need to invest in more white pan pastel before anything else. It's, it seems like with any type of pastel media or crayon media, I'm using up the white way before everything else. All right, and now I am gonna redefine my shadows, just wiping off the extra there. It's gonna have a pretty frame around it when I'm all done from cleaning up all my, all my, uh, cleaning up all my waste pastel, it's gonna be pretty. And this guy's in front, so I think I just wanna bring that edge over a little bit. And get that shut over here on this guy. It's a very simple, uh, simple shape, simple design to draw, so I don't wanna put too much in there and kind of ruin that. I wanna keep it fresh and lively. Okay, so now I'm gonna switch back to the pencils because I wanna get a little definition. And this set of 24 Derwent, it doesn't have um, all the colors I would like, but it's gonna, it's gonna be all right. I'm gonna use Burnt Carmine and um, I am gonna draw the, uh, the wiggly lines, filaments, whatever, coming out from the bottom of the jellyfish. And the cool thing is that when I go over the thick pastel, this won't stick, so it kind of automatically pushes those lines to the back. And this is where you can really guide the eye through your picture, give it a lot of movement. I like to kind of twist my pencil as I go because it kind of cleans it off a little bit. And the line's a little bit thicker up there. Okay. 
and bring it right um, beyond your boundaries. Take it right off the edge of the table. You can wipe it off with a white, wet rag when you're done. Just pull that line right off so you have the nice fluid stroke. Kind of like you're dancing. You know, I feel like I feel like Bruno and Dancing with the Stars. Long gait. <laughs> Porter bra. I don't know. I don't think that's a Porter bra. I don't know. Maybe it is. I don't know. Maybe I absorb some dancing knowledge watching that show. Okay, and we're going to do some on the other, the other um, jellyfish, which is, and those are going up higher more, I think, because maybe that one just zipped down to say howdy to its friend. Oh, hi, I didn't see you down there, just zooming on down through the ocean. Sees his buddy, swimming on down to catch up with him. Wait for me, wait up. So we got his, those filaments are kind of, are kind of just zooming up there and maybe even wisping back. Get that movement in there. You can even put some like lines over there. So maybe we have a, we have a jellyfish friend that's that's uh, already ahead of them. They're they're catching up with that jellyfish friend. And maybe a few over there. So think about design, not just what you see in the picture. Think about how you can improve the design as you go through and you create and paint. Okay, now I feel like I would like a little bit of the lines in front. So what I'm going to try doing is taking one of these other tools and I'm going to, I think I'll choose one that's got a finer tip. Like this one right here has got a finer tip on it. And I think I'll maybe just grab, I'll grab this dark purple. This is one of the tints to the, to the colors I've already used. I'm going to see about adding some of that in front. I don't know if it'll, st oh, it is sticking. I was just wondering if it would stick on top of what I've already put down there. And then I'm going to have to kind of tie that in with the uh, the lines I've already done. So I've got to be a little careful that I don't overdo it. So I'm just going to pull that and I'll be adding a little bit of that into the jellyfish body itself just to make it fit kind of. Make it so it doesn't feel so awkward. I don't want that color to seem like it's just coming in from nowhere, even though it's a mix of like that purple we've been using and black. I want to make sure that it's going to tie in. So I'll need to do something to tie that in with the rest of the painting. And so I'll do that right now. I'll grab some of that and I'm just going to outline the bottom edge of this and just drag some of that up in the shadow area. So these finer tip tools are going to be a little firmer. And this is the triangle here. It's a little bit firmer. It's not going to hold as much and it's not going to blend as much. So that's why they have all these different shapes and you can get a, you can get them in a pack with all the different shapes. And I think when you buy, well, I know when you buy a big set of like the, the 20, if you go ahead and you buy the 20 set of each of the, the families there, the painting families, then you will have, and I don't, I don't mean portrait and landscape. Those might, you might have duplicates if you buy the portrait and the landscape, but if you buy painting, then you buy like tints and then shades and extra dark shades. You'll have no um, doubles. I don't think, maybe you might have two blacks and two whites. I think you'll get two blacks and two whites, but that's all right because you use them up. Um, but that way you won't have any doubles. If you get like the painting and the mixed media sets and the landscape sets and the, you know, if you get the ones that are meant for a specific application, then you will have doubles with like the, the basic four sets that I mentioned. But if you only do landscapes, then get the landscape set. If you only do portraits, get the portrait set. Get what's right for you. What was right for me was I wanted one of everything. So I just kind of built my collection over the course of like two years um, as I could afford it or as I could justify spending that much money on, uh, on chalk basically. <laughs> So again, adding that color to some of the uh, the body just so it, it matches. And I feel like I would like a little bit uh, more strong white in there. So let me grab, let me clean off my, add to my frame here by cleaning off my, my applicator there. I want to put in some more pure color and I'm just going to tap it in there. But you can see there's like no sound on this, which is kind of nice. And that they're kind of transparent, so I kind of want them to overlap each other a little bit there. And then maybe just go in with a little bit of detail with a pastel pencil. I'll see if I can maybe put some of the creasy lines. It's not really going to stick on there, but I can kind of ma manipulate and scrape away some of the other pastel with the pastel pencils. And I can add you know, some movement lines. Um, and again, if I had a larger selection, 
of this. I could do a little bit more with it. I think I'll try that Prussian blue since I did use kind of a Prussian blue in the background with the stick to see if I can get a little bit more more definition. Now the on the range of hardness to softness the pastel pencil is going to be the hardest and then after that would be like a Conte crayon or a new pastel then you'd have like your Charvin pastels then you'd have like your, your mid-grade um, other pencil. brands that are super soft. Um, so just to let you know the different kind of ranges that you're working in. So it's really hard to get the pastel pencils to stick on top of the um, the pan pastels because you're trying to get something that is scratchier and harder to stick on something that's really soft and buttery. So that's why it doesn't want to work that well, but you can use it to your advantage to help scrape away some of the, uh, the design. And I really, I mean, the, the Derwent uh, pastel pencils are a little bit more expensive than other brands, and I really don't see them as a huge benefit. I think the less expensive General's pastel pencils are just as good, and they're going to be way cheaper, so I would just go with them, or whatever pastel pencils you can find. Um, I haven't really seen a lot of difference in quality between the different brands. I've used the Van Gogh, I've used the, uh, the Conte, I've used the Derwent, I've used General's. I really don't see a huge difference with there. So do whatever your budget allows and what you can find easily and economically in your uh, area. But there you have it, our jellyfish painting. If your colors feel too light, you can always spray some fixative on it or some inexpensive hairspray if you're not worried about archival. Um, archival ability of it then you can go back over with more like whiter highlights uh to pop it back if you want i personally don't like to use fixatives the nice thing about pan pastels is that it kind of you kind of push the pigment into the paper so that you don't really require uh fixing it that much you're not gonna have that loose dust like you get with a lot of other pastels and that's uh, just something fun to try i really like them um if you like them, the, hopefully this will help you find out. You can buy a couple individually to see if you like them before you buy a whole set and spend that kind of money. But I hope you found this tutorial enjoyable. If you like my tutorials, please check out my class at craftsy.com. There's a link in the video description so you can go find it. It's called Mix It Up, Mix Media Step by Step, and I am super excited to share that with you guys. Um, thank you so much for watching, and until next time, happy crafting.